Yo, what's going on, guys? Then my for simple snippets back with another video tutorial on Boolean algebra and logic gates. So in this video tutorial, we'll be looking into the concept of encoder and decoder combinational circuits. So in the previous couple of video tutorials in this playlist, that is Boolean algebra and logic gates, we've discussed some different combinational circuits like half adder, full adder, multiplexer, demultiplexer, and so on. So if I've missed those videos, you can see a card in the top right corner which points to the entire playlist of Boolean algebra and logic gates. Also, if you are new on this channel and haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel right now so that you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial on this channel. So now that you've subscribed, let's get started with today's topic. So as you can see on the blackboard, we have encoder and decoder combinational circuit and you can see the two block diagrams as well. So let me just first read out the theory and then we'll move ahead with the explanation. So encoder and decoder are used to convert the data from one form to another form. Okay, so encoder and decoder are combinational circuits. So they are digital circuits and they are basically used to convert one format of data to another format. Basically it is digital only just that it can be binary to BCD or BCD to a seven segment display binary to ASCII and so on and so forth. So whenever there is a conversion of the format of data, encoder and decoder play an important role. So in general, encoder have N input and M output and decoder have M inputs and N outputs. So N is usually greater than M in all the cases. And there is a relation between N and M, which we will discuss in a minute. And function of decoder is exactly opposite to encoder. So as the word suggests itself, the encoder encodes the data while the decoder decodes that same data. So talking about the relation between the data lines. So encoder takes N input lines. So you can see input lines over here, D0, D1, D2 and Dn. And it gives an output of M output lines. So Y0, Y1 and Ym. Now the relation between the two is such that N is equal to 2 raised to M. We'll explain this in a minute. Just for now, let me just write it out over here. Similarly for the decoder, it takes M inputs. So you can see D0, D1 and Dm and the output is going to be N outputs. So Y0, Y1, Y2, Yn and N is always greater than M. Okay, so let's take a case of 4 is to 2 encoder first and then we'll understand how this 4 cross 2 combination comes into picture. So 4 is the input line and this is the output line. So 4 input lines over here. Okay, so let's name them D0, D1, D2, D3. So this is 4x3 encoder ENC and the output line as I told is 2 output lines so Y0 and Y1. Okay. So let's try to see how come this combination comes into picture. Now imagine that at the input line at, at one time only one of the data line is going to be high. So it is either going to be D0 or D1 or D2 or D3 but all of them are not going to be high at the same time okay. Only one is allowed to be high at a single time and that has to be mapped to the output line. So how many unique binary bits are required to represent each of these line uniquely. So if you were to give an address comprising of two bit binary number to each of these line we would have combination of how many unique codes. So four lines can have unique address as follows 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So that is the reason why we have output of two lines only. Now let me explain. So when D0 is equal to 1, all of other lines are going to be 0. That's the condition. So in that case, the output is going to have 0 0. So the encoder is designed in such a way that the inside circuits and logic gates used inside the encoder will come to know that when D0 is 1, the output automatically has to be 0 0. Similarly, when D1 is going to be 1, the output has to be 0 and 1. So it has to be 0 1. So for D2 when D2 is going to be 1 the output has to be 1 0. So it has to be 1 0 and when D, D3 is going to be 1 and rest all are going to be 0 the output has to be 1 1. So we have uniquely mapped each of these input line depending upon the output. So instead of outputting entire four different lines why not reduce that number to two lines and simplify the circuit right. So that's where encoder comes into picture it also helps in simplifying the circuit and reducing the number of lines in transit. Okay so we've achieved an encoding function over here so these four lines are mapped to two lines and that's where n is equal to 2 raised to m comes into picture. So if n is 4, we require 2 raised to m output lines. So this m is equal to root of 4 which is going to be 2. So if there were 8 input lines, we would require 3 output lines and then the 3 output lines would have addresses like 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and so on. So there would be 8 unique addresses or 8 unique outputs. Okay, so this is all cool. So now the data is being transferred to the another circuit where the data was supposed to be transported or transmitted. Now the decoder comes into picture. So the decoder is again going to be a four, a two cross four decoder because we have 
a four cross two encoder. So the decoder has to be exactly opposite. So it has to take these two outputs which were given by encoder as inputs. So let me just make that connection over here. So the output of the encoder, which is two bit binary code, is going to be input for the decoder. So two x four decoder and then 4 is going to be the output so the decoder does exactly opposite what encoder does so the decoder would know that for 0 0 which is coming as the output of encoder the y0 has to be activated so if it is 0 0 then the output is going to be y0 equals to 1 y1 equals to 0 y2 equals to 0 y3 equals to 0 similarly if the output of the encoder is 0 1 that is d1 line is going to be activated right so if it is 0 1 then y1 line is going to be activated and rest are all going to be 0 Similarly, for if D2 is activated, the output of the encoder is going to be 1, 0, which is going to be input for the decoder. So the input here is D0 and D1. Okay. So 1, 0 is going to give you Y2 as the output, which is going to be high and rest all are going to be 0. And similarly, D3 is going to be mapped with Y3. So then you get the data back from the decoder. So this is the basic working of encoder and decoder. And let's see the truth table for a 4 cross 2 encoder and 2 cross 4 decoder. Okay. So let's try to write down the truth table for 4 cross 2 encoder so I have four first four are going to be input columns so these are going to be input columns and this is going to be for output so let me just write down the input so starting from d0 d1 d2 and d3 so when d1 is high others are kept 0 similarly d1 is high others are kept 0 and then that trend goes on so at a time only one of the input line is going to be high corresponding to that we have the out output of y0 and y1 for encoder we just saw in the previous slide so when D0 is 1, the output is going to be 0, 0. When D1 is 1, the output is going to be 0, 1. For D2, it is 1, 0. And for D3, it is 1, 1. So this was the truth table for encoder. We just saw in the previous slide as well. So this is how you map each input line with a unique output code. Now the truth table for decoder is exactly going to be opposite. We'll say Y0 and Y1, which is going to be actually the input lines. So actually they are going to be D0 and D1 for the decoder. And for it would have a combination of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So here the first two columns are going to be input and the next two columns are going to be output. Sorry, the next four columns are going to be output. So for output again, we have D0, D1, D2 and D3. So we get back the data lines. So for 0, 0 combination, we know that D0 has to be activated. So this is going to be 1 and rest are going to be 0. For 1, 0 combination, the decoder knows that D1 has to be activated because that's the signal which encoder gave. That is when it was D1 was high, the Y1 and Y0 are going to be 0 and 1. So for 0 and 1, D1 has to be high at the decoder end as well and rest are going to be 0. Similarly, for 1, 0, D2 is going to be high and for 1, 1, D3 is going to be high and rest are going to be 0. So this is the basic truth table for 4 cross 2 encoder and 2 cross 4 decoder. Okay, so this was a basic explanation of what encoder and decoders are, what they do and where are they applied. Basically, you just need to understand why this combination is used. That is this n is equal to 2 raised to m where for an encoder n is the number of inputs and m is the number of output lines and for a decoder it is exactly opposite. So m is the number of input lines and n is the number of output lines. But this equation holds true in both the cases and basically what encoder and decoder are used for is they used to convert different formats of data. So perform conversion from one format to another format and also reduce the circuit lines in between transit. So you can see a four line data is being transmitted on two lines as output but this is only when one of the line has to be high and rest are going to be zero. So this is a unique condition and encoders and decoders are widely used in different conversion scenarios. So yeah, this was a basic example of encoder and decoder and I hope you understand how it works and this combinational circuits are now clear to you. Now there are different types of encoders and decoders and also depending upon the number of input lines and output lines. So we have 8 cross 3 encoder, we have 16 cross 4 encoder and then corresponding decoders as well. So if you want those videos, you can let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on those types of encoder and decoder. Then we have different type based on functionality as well. That is priority encoder, BCD to decimal encoder and so on. So we'll try to make video tutorials on that as well. Okay, so hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think this is very informational and helpful, share it with your friends so that even they understand this concept. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial. So that's it for this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.